Anna! Hey, it's Andrew. Um, I wasn't going to make a video blog today. I'm not considering this to be a video blog. I've gotten some other questions, and I'm going to get to them later this week. But, since you took the time to make a video for me, I thought, I was literally about to fold my laundry. And I was like, no. I got the email, and I watched your video, and I wanted to re reply right away. Because I thought what you said was really interesting. So, uh, I also made some notes. It's because I have a horrible memory. Um, first of all, you apologize for your accent, which don't apologize for. Wherever wherever you're from, I would have an accent there, so don't worry about it. Um, now, you talked a lot about, and because this is interesting, I think, uh, because I was raised on cast albums, listening to cast albums, and then I would go to the theater and see the show and be like, oh, that's a little different, let's up with that. Because you talked about how it sounds different live, I think that's what you were talking about, how it sounds different live than it does on the cast album. And you felt like we maybe sang a little bit differently or uh, and it sounded a little clearer um, here's what I think that comes down to I don't think uh, any of us make any choices to sing differently we're certainly encouraged to sing exactly the way that we sing it every night uh, at the theater uh, which you saw and I'm glad that you did um, the, the one specific thing that I want to mention because uh, because you started off your, your video lip syncing to my little monologue was that with that monologue the way that it's structured in the show is they do hair the, the tribe does hair uh, Theo plays Hubert and I clap I come down and I say you kids are terrific you little pop tarts are terrific maybe I should learn the line and then I launch into this monologue and I tell the audience that I'm all impassioned and, and I think that a lot of the energy of that speech comes out of the audience's reaction. And so if I was doing it so so big and you know holding for the laughs that I, I get sometimes if I do it right, then it would sound really awkward on the album if you're just listening to it as a standalone thing. Because if you go into your iTunes and you click on My Conviction, it starts right there. Um, which... Uh, and it would it would sound a little bit out of nowhere, I think, if, if it was at ten, which it is in the show. So I yeah, that got modified a little bit. But I think that what what the real root of the thing is, is that in the recording studio, there's millions of dollars of equipment, and incredibly trained professionals, who only focus on the sound that we're making and making it as crisp and as clear and as live as possible. Whereas in the theater, you know, the person sitting in seat A113 might be hearing the show a little bit differently than the person sitting in, you know, X42. And, you know, the people that do sound on Broadway are the most talented professionals in the world. Um, but still, you're sitting in a 1400 seat theater, it's not going to sound exactly the same from every single seat. They do everything that they can do to make sure that the sound is as crisp and as clear as possible. That's why we wear these mics. A lot of shows have mics up in their hairline or over here. We have these boom mics that come around to right here so that the mic can be as close to our mouth as possible to make the sound as crisp and as clear as possible. Um, but even so, you know, you're in a theater. You're, the person next to you is maybe breathing a little bit loudly. The person behind you is shuffling their feet. There's a lot of factors that can... Uh, take away from the just crisp clarity of the sound that you can get in a recording studio. Because if you watch, there's a video on Broadway.com that you can watch. We're in these little booths uh, all by ourselves. The band's not even in the same room. It's all about getting the sound to be as crisp and as clear as possible. And I think that's why it, it works a little bit better. Um, or not better, just uh, differently. It's a, it's a whole different energy listening to a cast album than seeing a show live. Um, and I think that the cast album, I think that the hair cast album worked out really well because it, um, it, it, it really did a lot to kind of capture a, a lot of the energy that the show has live and was really brave, I think, about doing that. Um, and that's why I think it's successful. So anyway, thank you for that. And you said at the end there, you said that you saw the show and it it changed you and, and that that you felt like that might come off as naive or childish or sad and it doesn't it uh, the show has a power there's we, we've met hundreds of people who have done hair 
either the original cast or they did it in, you know, in the 80s at a community theater or they did it in college or, like, the JCC in Cleveland just did a production. Like, there's do something about this show. There's something about hair that once you do it or once you see it and once you become a part of it, it does, it changes you. It makes you think differently. It makes you look at things differently. And uh, I think there's nothing to be ashamed of in that. I think there's there's something to be proud of in that, in that you're you're open enough and your soul is is uh, warm and inviting enough to welcome that message in. Um, I hope that doesn't sound corny. So thanks for your response. I really appreciate it. I That was much more long-winded than I meant to be, and now I have to fold my laundry. Um, so there will be a new video blog later this week where I'm going to answer the rest of the questions, folks. Um, but I wanted to re reply especially to Anna and say thanks for for making me a response video. I dig the response videos. This is cool. Um, and I'm also like New York sports out right now. Yankees, Knicks. Laundry day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Anna. If you have any more questions, let me know.